Hey traders, this is Tosh. I go by tbradley90 in the My Investing Club chat. General reminder for you guys, for those who don't know, MIC is having a one year anniversary event where Bao is going to be trading live in front of our members. It's coming up August 17th. Mark your calendars. As an added benefit for our members, the event is 100% entirely free for annual and lifetime members. While lifetime on top of that, get extra coaching before the event and front row seating. While most charge for these events, we show our support by making it entirely free again for annual and lifetime members. If you are interested in signing up for this specific event and or attending, DM T Bradley 90 in the My Investing Club chat and or email myself at tosh at myinvestingclub.com. Now, today we have a very special video for you guys. One of our head moderators, Austin, who goes by Aloha Trader in chat, is back for his weekly Thursday webinar. He is both long and short bias trader as Austin goes into talking about MIC strategies, market conditions, and takes members' questions live. While this is just a preview, if you want to watch the full-length, almost two-hour webinar, and if you want to watch any of our full-length exclusive content, then become an MIC member. And so this week, um, this webinar, we're going to go over some important trades, <clears throat> and I say that with a grain of salt, important trades. It's kind of hard to find any real important trades in this kind of market. It's been so slow. But I'm going to go through some important trades, like the trades I did take this week that I felt had some merit and or non-merit. Uh, I'm going to be going over the weekly market, market sentiment as normal. Uh, we're going to go over the key topic I feel like is, is what's on my mind and pressing this week. And um, this new, this new uh, segment this week that I'm going to introduce is called the strategy board. It's where I'm going to break down and analyze a particular strategy and um, kind of go over the ins and outs, what's good about it, what's bad about it, how can it be improved, what makes it successful, what makes it not successful, stuff like that. So I'm going to be going over that, and I'm excited about this because this is going to be on a topic that, that I uh, feel is going to be relevant to almost every single trader in here. So let's get to it. So trades that I took. Um, I, I got to move this. Uh, trades that I took were uh, KSS. And I took KSS. Now, this is, an, this is a bad trade. This is a bad trade that I did. And I'm really embarrassed about this trade because I made the same kind of mistake last week on Roku. In my, old, in my webinar, I talked about like how I covered Roku right at red to green. And I didn't, you know, it did go down lower and I should have been there for it lower. But like it didn't look so bad on the Roku chart because it, where I got was close to the bottom. But still, I should have held longer. Um, and I could have gotten lower on the Roku trade. Well, I certainly could have gotten lower on this, uh, on KSS. So JMU is the trade that I commented live a couple days ago. <laughs> and again, kind of bottom of the barrel stuff, important trades. But this is an important trade in the sense where I can highlight <laughs> that this was a flexible trade or an idea trade, I also call them, <clears throat> which we'll, we'll get into later on in the video. But... <clears throat> This flexible trade, it means that I was willing to kind of sit back from the trade a little bit and I, and I accepted the risk. I had the ability to accept the risk. I was okay with this going back to 60s. And I said that in live commentary, like this is a back of the radar trade. I'm getting in and I'm willing to let it pan out and work because I think my idea might take more time to realize and it's not necessarily going to happen right away trade. This is another, um, CNF was kind of another one of these important ones. I'm not showing the whole chart, not um, not because I'm, I'm going to hide anything or anything, but um, it messes up the chart if I show the whole chart, right? Because uh, this stock actually had an offering. So like it, it really messes up. You can't see the, the, the details of my trade if I show the whole one, but this eventually did an offering, right? So um, always something to be careful when you're longing, you know, like that's a risk that you're willing to take. That, or that you're putting yourself into that they, these, these turd companies can offer. And you got to be wary if you're in, I guess, an offering market, which is what we're in now. So CNF is like a classic catalyst, right? It's a low float stock, very classic. And phase three was mentioned in the news. Now, this, this kind of goes into my classic hype factor. Phase three always has a hype factor. And even if it is fluff, that doesn't mean that it, it, it's not going to catch a fire, right? Like fluff can... Cotton candy is fluff and it can catch fire. Like, I know it's not a good metaphor, but it just worked this year. So um, 750 was, there's normally I like to pick a daily chart that um, 
that kind of guides my trade, but this one didn't really have one. So what I did was I sit back at the open and kind of let the open tell me what the level was going to be. So I saw that uh, seven was holding and 750 was kind of the equilibrium price. So as long as we held these two levels, I was kind of confident that we might be able to go and retest this high a day magnet. Now I go over this in my front side versus back side video on how the, the only reason why you should be in a trade is to get to the target. Like the, the exit, is the reason why I'm in. So last week I talked about how like this, these are pictures from Wally, you know, like this was the one spark of hope, kind of like the one, the one plant that, that's surviving. Like, um, you know, we only had that one um, hope last week. This week we're kind of seeing like more, more, more stuff blossom. We're starting to see more, more plays open up, more, more volume come in. We had a list of stocks like Codex, VLRX, OTLK, BIOC, CNF, OBLN, ONCS. Um, and I, I, I rated these red and greens based on the effect I, fit, I feel they're giving to the sentiment. VLRX absolutely got destroyed, right? Remember like yesterday or a couple of, whenever this comes out, VLRX absolutely got destroyed out of the open. And that's not really that good sentiment for runners, right? That's not going to encourage a lot of longs to buy. OTLK was the strongest stock this week. Like we, it, it had like a day four. So it, it, it really gave a lot of hope that like stocks can continue. We can have day twos. You can buy in a day, hold, and that there's going to be gap ups, that kind of stuff. Um, CANF had an offering. That's obviously really bad for the market. OBLN up until today was – a green and then it turned into a red with this stupid offering in the morning um and ONCS also offered so like it's kind of split like I honestly am pretty impressed with how active the market is given that this is like probably the most offerings I've seen in a week in like gosh maybe ever right like we had CLRB, CANF, o ONCS, OBLN like four offerings in like a week it's 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 crazy and so like sparks of hope, you know, OTLK, definitely the spark of hope this week. Over then I did add to that list, but not anymore. Like when it offered, I would put this X here. And so again, summer is coming. Uh, and I'm hoping that we get this one flurry. I ideally before the June or the, the July kind of earnings season, I'm hope like, I think that's going to be the killer dead summertime. So I'm hoping like this is end of May. I'm hoping in June, mid June or something, we get a nice pop or early June, we get a nice pop. All right. All right. So yeah, so this is another, um, this is a, a visual depiction of my, what I, um, how I judge the market. There's the buy now, ask questions later market. This is the market that's the most fun, provided you don't short too early. This is the market that's the most fun, kind of for longs and shorts, because there's runners all over the place and there's stuff to watch. Everything's going and and there's there's never a dull moment. Like everything's going up. It doesn't even matter what the news is. People are in buy mode and like everything just seems to go up 50, 60, 70, 80, 100, 200, 300 percent. Like this is the buy now, ask questions later market, the longs market. And then from this market, we typically transition into what I call the tankers market, or the short sellers market, where Everyone is so used to just everything going up that everyone gets a little bit overly long bias and stuff starts stuffing all the time. Just everything just keeps stuffing over and over and over again. Just you'll see like plays just stuff in the morning, stuff in the morning, like high day breaks just fail. Um, you'll get a, a couple of VLRX that just die straight off of the open, right? And then then you know kind of know you're into the tankers market and there, there's normally going to be a couple indicators like you're going to get a couple um that kind of in the buy now ask questions later market like they're gonna like sometimes it's an offering that does it like an offering or or a couple of vlrx's a couple of high day major stuffs or stocks that run at the open and then totally bag hold everyone kind of a few indicators that um that the tankers market is, is, is the market is, sh is shifting and then from the tankers market, we entered the dead market because when everything is dying, all the demand volume, everyone says, you know what, I'm not buying crap, right? Like no one's buying. And if no one's buying stuff, then the market's dead. And this is where we're at now. And I feel like right now we're trying to climb into this buy now, ask questions later market. We're trying to transition, but these offerings just keep like, it's like Zeus throwing lightning bolts at this, at this transition, right? Just like not letting 
not letting the mark not letting this market come about and it's getting getting kind of hard to put buy orders in you nominate something like tesla and then i start to get worried if i have to borrow a large cap stock that means everyone else wants to short it too and i get a little bit nervous actually or i get super excited because everyone's shorting because i know it's going to go down it all depend like i remember uh nintendo stock a long time ago was hard to borrow that was an otc though like the the pokemon when pokemon go had its uh, flurry that would that that one everyone wanted to short it but just took completely tanks that was an exciting play so yeah and so like thank yeah so joe brings up abio like i i described this in the chat and he brought up abio and this is an exact exact perfect perfect example like so on five one yeah we're gonna get there Yeah, so, so this is a, this is a good example of one. So yeah, what you're looking for is that domino effect, and where they're kind of lining up, right? They're kind of lining up. So like this is perfect. Like already, I can see that this is setting up to be a good one, right? So let's just go frame by frame. This is setting up to be a good one. Like you have this one here. Like this little perk 850, then you got like 830, 8 kind of 25 to 30 area here, um, eight dollar uh, 750 to VWAP area here, this 725 level. So you're just waiting for all these to turn. Like it's probably gonna happen around here, right? Like is this one's gonna lead to that one, to that one, into the high of the day, and this can really go right. So like you're looking for stuff that has like high volume, strong volume, good catalyst, low float. And you want to see that kind of initial push, right? Um, that, that says, hey, it might happen. And this is, we kind of get it. And oh, look at this. So see how this works out perfectly? This, this right here is, um, this right here is 825. So it, it, it coincides with this one here. So now everyone's thinking it's totally going to work, right? Like this, res this resistance totally held where it tanked hard before it's totally going to work like it. So like people can short now with a, with a good risk on 825. So this means that if this ever does break 825, it should be pretty strong. And so like, let's like scroll, scroll over. Where is it? Oh crap. Oh crap. Oh, so it's right there. It happened pretty immediately. It happened. It happened pretty immediately. So see that? Yeah. Like the second it breaks through the 825 and 830, because now everyone thinks it works. And when it doesn't, it's totally going to go right. Like, and, and this is, this is the domino, like this, you know, this breaks, this breaks, this breaks, this breaks. And we just break high a day with, with severe authority because, um, there's those dominoes and stops and high volume coming in, right? This high volume kind of ignites it. But this is kind of the perfect one. This is exactly what you want to see this higher, low consolidation, uh, you know, relatively high volume, high volume on the perk, um, low float, good catalyst, all this stuff. This is the perfect one, I would say. And VWAP coincides so perfectly with the initial push. It's, it's perfect. Um, And like, I think Joe asked, so what would your risk be? My risk on this would be the, the 750 where it, meet, where it originally perked through um, over and under. I, I, could, I don't think I could risk 791. Maybe if I felt that there was dump risk, like if it was thin on the tape, I might sell half under 790. That I can see myself doing that, but saving the rest of the half of the stop for under 750, just so that if it does like fake and reclaim, I'm immediately getting right back in and I can trust that maybe now that's my new stop if it faked to break down and then held a higher low right there that might be my new stop but as of right here if i'm buying there 750 is my risk over and under um uh what's my average full size on small caps i don't I, like a max share size such as 10k i don't really have like a max share size i typically don't like to you so like like if the situation comes up where I'm willing to, I, I deal with it more in risk, right? Like, 
and I normally keep size kind of quiet just because I like that's kind of an unspoken truth in trading, I guess. But like, um, no, I'll say this. No, I, I don't think I'll, I'll ever like to lose $1,000. So I guess there's that. But like, I'll go in more than 10K, you know, like, I'll, like if, if there comes like a really nice, um, if it's really good setup and like, I, I feel like I can have tight risk where it's liquid enough and I feel I can trust the tight risk, right? Why not go bigger? Just have that, you know, same risk that you would have on a normal trade, but bigger reward, right? Those are kind of rare when you, when you find those tight risk tr trades, but, um, you know, where you can d depend on the tight risk, but yeah, like if I find those, like when I do find them, they're rare, but I do like to take advantage and I'm happy to go as much size as my risk is willing to, to let me go. I, I think of everything as how much do I want to lose if I'm wrong? Do I use VWAP to help with longs? So VWAP is my guide, right? VWAP is not my holy grail. Um, I like to use it um, when it coincides with the thesis, like uh, ABIO was the 750 thesis, right? The, this is where the last big volume tank reclaims, like VWAP just happens to be there. That makes my thesis stronger. Um, I, I am, see, I, I will buy under VWAP if like AXSM was my very first recap. And I think that was an under VWAP buy. There was high volume consolidating from the daily level at six. And that was what was important for me for the trade was the daily $6 level. And because that was the, you know, that held and was making higher lows and grinding, we were under VWAP at that time. I didn't give it a second thought, but I can't, I do understand um, traders who are newer. It, it, it's probably a good rule to have. Don't buy under VWAP because I would say most stocks that are under VWAP probably stay that way. You know, there's not a lot of, you know, reclaims don't happen as often as non reclaims do. So I can understand that rule for the newer, longer or the newer trader. Does buying and selling the inner lines work the same and similar to large cap? Yes, I don't really do inner lines on large caps just because range is typically a lot larger. So I'm typically mostly going for outer lines on large caps, but I do think support and resistance works the same. When buying the dip, do you wait for confirmation or set fantasy orders? So this is the key question, right? Like, do you wait to let the bounce prove itself and then buy with a little higher risk than the fantasy order? Or do you get in jumping in front of the train and not? This is, the, my answer to that is both. Sometimes I do both depending on the setup. A lot of times I do half and half. So I'll do half and half. Like I'll put half of my orders out there for fantasy. And then if it confirms, like I'm willing to add lower. And then if it confirms, um, on my dip, like if, if I, if it does bounce from that level, I'm willing to put the rest on and can want it to confirm. So sometimes I do half and half. Any setups for trading zombies? Yeah. All of my, a lot of my recaps are kind of trading zombies. Like this is one. <coughs> I just went over a good example for the, tr the zombie trade. How well respected are lines in large cap stocks? I think they're respected still the same, but I think maybe for, from a small caps eyes, they may not be respected just because the wiggle room on a large cap needs to be a lot more like a wiggle room on a small cap might be like five cents for me, but it might be like 25 cents on a large cap. Hey traders, this is Tosh. I go by T Bradley 90 in the my investing club chat. Just wanted to reach out and say, if you have any questions about MIC joining MIC, maybe you're a member already. You have three ways to contact myself personally and through MIC. You can hit our social media. You can hit me through PMs in chat, or you can contact us through my email at Tosh at my investing club.com. That's T O S H at my investing club.com. I will get back to you in a timely manner, and I'm saying this because I'm here to help, and I don't want anybody to be afraid to reach out and ask any question that they have. We are here for you guys. All right. See you guys.